But just to kind of give you a flavor for what a load test looks like, uh, I'm going to go up here to Compositions. Compositions are basically our load tests. And what a composition looks like, I'll go ahead and open up this sample composition for Sosta Store V2, is it's just going to be a combination of different types of user flows. Here we've got this home page, Sosta Store, and Shop for Items. These are different recordings that we have of opening a browser, going to a different site, performing different types of user activities. So uh, this particular load test has four different types of user flows. Users going to the home page, and users shopping for an item, or posting a comment, or browsing the site. Um, now when we record these user flows, and uh, as these become available, what you'll see is down below here, every time you record a user flow, it's on the cloud test server, you can just drag and drop it into this interface to add that to the cloud test server. And then all you have to do is identify how many users you'd like doing that particular type of activity. In this case, so it's just sort of like the browse user flow. We're going to have 30 users that are browsing. And then also, a little further to the left here, identify where you would like to generate that load from. So one of the great things about Cloud Test is we've got this capability to generate the load from any of the major cloud uh, providers. That includes uh, Amazon, Azure, Google, GoGrid, Dimension Data, Rackspace, Ching Cloud in China, and uh, several others that I haven't mentioned here. But with this capability then, you can actually generate load from lots of locations around the world, generate at very large scale because we have access to tens of thousands of servers in minutes as needed. So um, this load test that we're going to be running here, we're getting basically 120 users, but you can actually go up to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. We've done load tests for 2 million simultaneous users. So scale, absolutely not a problem for cloud test. Um, before we do that, though, we're going to need to bring up these servers in California, Oregon, Japan, and Ireland. And the way we do that is something in cloud test called deploying a grid. If I go back to the central tab here and go to this section called grids, what grids are are basically we can identify groups of servers that we'd like to use for load test. You can see in this demo2 section here, this uh, check grid here, that's a grid of servers that I've already deployed that are going to work for this load test in Oregon, Northern California, Ireland, and uh, <laughs> in Japan. Uh, but you can pick any locations you want in any volume. It takes about three to five minutes to pull up a grid of anywhere from three to 300 to 3,000 servers. And so again, very quick deployment. Um, to run the load test, all we have to do is on the upper right here, go up and hit play button. And what's going to happen is the cloud test server, this one at mike.sosta.com, is going to reach out to those different load generators in different uh, locations hand them the script, tell them how to simulate users going to the home page or shop for items or posting comments, and we're going to be able to see the data live right here in the browser as the load test is underway. So I'm going to go to the play tab here. We're going to start with maybe this dashboard called the Dynamic Globe dashboard, uh, but we're looking at all the data coming in real time in this load test here. Let's go ahead and kind of look at the, uh, the data coming in. You can see that we're resolving requests here. Um, a couple things about this. Color code is telling us how fast the responses are coming back. Um, the width of these lines is showing you how much bandwidth you have, so you can actually see right away which location is getting the most bandwidth, how fast the different responses are coming back from the different locations. You can set the color coding up here in this uh, upper right-hand section here. So let's go ahead and say we want the color coding to be the response times, and anything from about 0 to 300 milliseconds will be yellow, and then maybe 300 to 600 milliseconds is going to be red. And that gives us a quick and easy way to start to differentiate, hey, the different locations, how fast are the responses? And you can see right away here that the request from Europe and Japan, much slower than the request coming from the U.S. to our server located here. Now, if we want more detail about what's going on, we've got other dashboards available in CloudTest. We can go into any of these different dashboards and start to look at a little bit more detailed information about um, what's going on. This, uh, this collection analytics dashboard is going to show us not only the overall of each of the different um, scripts are running, different types of virtual user flows. But within each one of these things, you can go ahead and actually start to take a look at how long the different steps or processes within each of these flows are doing just by expanding this. So you can see how long it takes to take up the home page, click in the comment tab, uh, shopping for items, et cetera here. You can see the average duration, minimum duration, maximum duration. Even see a kind of a chart over time for those different responses as the load test is underway. And right here, you can see this average collection duration that these, um, these lines here are representing how long it takes for each of those pages to load. And you can see that things are starting to slow down. Um, if I just focus on maybe even just home page, you'll see that since the load test has started, the home page was pretty quick. And then the response time for bringing up home page went up to 26 seconds. So things are definitely getting slower. If we want more details about what's going on, Cloud Test has kind of the capability to see at a high level, but also start to drill in uh, to the uh, exact details about exactly why these different pages might be slowing down as they go come under load. So when we go into this waterfall dashboard here, on the left-hand side again, you're going to see the different types of virtual users that we're running. And I can click on this home page here and now see not only how long does it take for that page to load overall, but a full waterfall chart showing every request in the page here. 
And at the top here, you can see the initial HTTP request gets redirected, another HTTP request, and then all the resources on the page here. And it starts to become very obvious very quickly exactly what's going on here. You can see those initial requests are what's taking so long. We've got a wait time here of about 10 seconds, then a redirect and another wait time of about 10 seconds. Now this blue wait time, it's a time to first byte time from after the application server has acknowledged the request until it actually sends the response with the first byte in it. And so it's a sign to us that our application server might be bogging down. If I want to go that next step, if I go to this monitoring combined chart, if I, um, this allows us to start to take a look at what's going on on the server. Um, Cloud test not only allows you to send and, and generate volume going against the site and see how fast the response is and the page responses from the user point of view, but we also allow you to monitor the different servers here. And here you can see the CPU on the server that we're load testing. Early on in the test has actually gone up to about 100% 100, um, 100 CPU. Actually, had only about 27 virtual users, and we're already at 130 virtual users. So things are looking pretty bad. We tapped out the CPU pretty quick. You can see things like memory utilization, process count, et cetera. Um, we have a few different ways of picking up these metrics. We have our own monitoring agent that you can install on the servers. We also integrate to all of the major APM tools like AppDynamics, New Relic, Dynatrace, Introscope, uh, CloudWatch. So you can actually pick up a lot of detailed information using either our own or your own monitoring tool. But what's important to note here is that we've got visibility as the load test is underway, both for the client side response times and, and data about why it's getting slow, as well as on the server side. And we can start to dig in and see what's going on, both in terms of response times, but also things like error rates and understand where things are going south. So if I pull up the error analysis dashboard, um, so far it looks like we don't have any errors, which is great. We don't want to have a lot of errors. Um, but if we did want to understand maybe how much more headroom do I have, how many users can I get to until my site starts to uh, bog down and maybe uh, throw some errors. Well, if I go back to that dynamic globe dashboard here, one of the other things that we noticed here is at the bottom we have these sliders. This allows us to adjust the volume of users in real time so that we can test things, see how many users might be able to um, come to the site on a search, how heavy is the, uh, the process for doing a purchase, etc. So you can actually crank up the volume on any one of these. It'll ask you for two things. First of all, how many users do you want to go up to and how quickly do you want to get there? So we're going to go up to 200 users here over the next minute just because we want to see, you know, what's our capacity? When are we going to break? And when I hit the supply ramp changes, that change takes place immediately. And when I go back to any of these dashboards that we're looking at, we're going to start to see that um, increase in virtual users right away. Um, down here, the virtual user count, this graph here, you can see that we went up to about 130 users and held steady. Then I applied that ramp change, and we're going to see the number of virtual users going up. So as we ramp up the virtual users, we're going to start to understand if we hit errors and hopefully, um, you know, what those specific errors are as we go into the error analysis dashboard. So let's give it a second to do that uh, as we wait for the uh, errors to come up as we understand the capacity of our site here.